a gang pulls off the biggest bank robbery in history in a crazy and very clever way. The police then search for the robbers to catch them. In the end, the mastermind of the operation does something crazy and unexpected. So what happened? And how did it happen? Follow this exciting story to the end to find out. Welcome everybody to our channel. On Monday, July 19, 1976, in the French city of Nice, in a bank called Societe Generale, which is considered one of the largest and most fortified banks in France, the bank manager and an employee went to the safe to open it and start working. This safe was one of the most fortified and secure safes in the world, where the money and deposits of the bank's customers were kept. This safe had two doors. The employee opened the first door without any problems, but when he tried to open the second door, it did not open. They thought it was stuck as usual, so they contacted the company that manufactured the safe for maintenance. During this time, people began to gather near the bank door to start their financial transactions, but the bank employees could not open the bank because all the money and deposits were in the safe. After that, one of the employees of the safe manufacturer arrived and began to inspect the door. He found that the gears were working fine and there was no problem. However, the door still did not open. He continued to try to find the problem until it was past 2 p.m., but to no avail. After that, the bank management decided to make a small hole in the wall in order to look through it and be able to find out why they could not open the safe. The bank employee brought a drill and started making a hole in the wall. He then looked through the hole and saw that the safe was completely empty. He was amazed by what he saw and told the manager what he saw. The manager quickly looked through the hole and was completely amazed and did not believe what he saw. He then called the police and investigators immediately. After that, the police and investigators arrived to begin the biggest investigation in history. They first widened the hole they had made in the wall of the safe, then they entered the safe to find that many of the safety deposit boxes, which contained money and deposits of the bank's customers, were broken and empty. They also found that there was a tunnel dug and connected to the sewers, and they found a sentence written on the wall that said, without violence, without weapons, and without hatred. They also found 27 gas cylinders, large ventilation pipes, and electrical wires that were 1,000 meters long. After the investigators saw all of this, they realized that the bank had been the victim of a major robbery, in which the thieves had dug a long tunnel connecting the safe to the sewers. The gas cylinders were used to operate the digging equipment that was used, and the pipes were clearly used for ventilation and to provide the tunnel with oxygen. The value of the stolen goods was estimated at $10 million, which was a very large amount, especially during that time. After that, the news of the robbery spread everywhere through the newspapers, and the press described this robbery as the robbery of the century. A quarter million dollar reward was offered by the bank for information leading to the arrest of the thieves. The investigators then began to investigate all the bank's employees, customers, and residents who lived near the bank. After much investigation and gathering of evidence, suspicions were directed towards one of the gangs that was present there and which was known for using the sewers in its criminal activities and robberies. This gang was called the Sewer Rats Gang. The investigators then began to investigate this gang and search for its members, including the mastermind of the operation. After much investigation, they were able to reach people who appeared to be members of that gang, so they monitored them to confirm this and reach the mastermind of the plan. In early October, something unexpected happened. Two of the suspects went to a bank to sell a gold bar. The bank teller took the bar's number and contacted the police. The police verified the number and found that the bar was one of the stolen goods from the Societe Generale Bank. This meant that the investigators' suspicions about those people were correct. Immediately, the police went to the bank and arrested the suspects. They took them to the police station and the investigators began to interrogate them. After much pressure from the investigators, the suspects finally confessed and gave the names of the gang members who participated in the robbery. After these confessions, the police began to arrest the perpetrators one by one and interrogate them. They pressured them to confess who was the mastermind of the robbery. One day, while the investigators were interrogating one of the suspects, the suspect confessed that the mastermind was a photographer named Albert Spagiri. The police went to his house to arrest him. When they arrived and told him that he was accused of a huge robbery of the Societe Generale Bank, he was shocked and denied the charge completely. Although the police were not sure if he was involved in the robbery, they took him to the police station to interrogate him. They also gathered information about him from his neighbors and friends, 
who told them that he was a simple photographer and that he loved his wife very much. He had chosen to live in the countryside in search of peace. After that, the police began to search Albert's house and farm. At the same time, the investigators began to interrogate him. During the interrogation, Albert remained completely calm and denied all the charges against him. The investigators then began to pressure him, but to no avail. However, the investigators had found illegal weapons and explosives in a hut on his farm. They threatened him that they would charge his wife with possession of illegal weapons and she would be imprisoned for a very long time. Albert loved his wife very much and considered her the most important thing in his life. He could not bear that, so he decided to confess everything. He told them that he would cooperate with the investigation on condition that they not harm his wife. Albert Spagiri then began to confess. He said that two years earlier, a neighbor who worked at the bank had told him that the safe did not have an alarm. When he heard this, he began to think about robbing the safe. He went to the bank and rented one of the safety deposit boxes so that he could go down to the safe alone without raising any suspicions. After he got the key to the box he rented, he went down to the safe and had a camera with him. He opened the box he rented, then started taking pictures of the safe, which was full of safety deposit boxes. He began to think of a plan that would allow him to enter the safe and open all the safety deposit boxes and steal their contents. After much thought, he found that the best way to do this was to use the city of Nice's vast sewer system. He went to the sewers and started wandering around inside them, looking for the closest place to the safe to dig a tunnel that would connect the sewers to the safe. After a long search, he was unable to find the right place to dig, so he went to the municipality, claiming to be a construction contractor, and took their sewer system plans. After reviewing these plans, he was able to identify the right place to dig. The estimated length of the tunnel to be dug was 10 meters. Because the bank is located on a busy street, this meant that it was possible for someone to hear the sound of digging equipment during the digging process. Therefore, he decided to use manual tools for digging. He then traveled to Marseille and met with the leaders of the sewer rat gang and other gangs. He offered them his assistance in the robbery in exchange for a large share. When he told them about the plan, they liked it and agreed to join him. After that, Albert returned to Nice and began to implement the plan. He placed a group of men with radios near the bank to monitor the situation and inform him if anything happened. Then, the excavation process began. The men began to dig with manual tools in order to avoid making sounds that could be heard from the outside. This made the task very difficult and tiring. The lack of ventilation and the high heat there made things even more difficult. One time, one of the men collapsed from exhaustion. Albert decided that he needed to improve the conditions of the task in order for them to be able to complete it. He divided the work among the men so that they would dig for 10 minutes and then rest for 10 minutes. This allowed them to rest and not become exhausted. He also contracted a doctor to treat any one of them who became exhausted or ill. He also placed ventilation pipes and long electrical wires connected to parking lots near the excavation site. These wires reached the sewers and the tunnel they were digging and they used them to light the lamps and ventilation pipes. After all that, the conditions became suitable for work and the men began to work at a faster pace. After nine weeks, the digging process was finally completed, and they were very happy about that. However, there was still a problem. How could they penetrate the thick and very hard wall of the safe without making any sound, since they would be using a drill to penetrate it? Albert thought of a solution. They brought the drill and Albert went to the street and asked them to start drilling. Albert found that the sound of the drill never reached the street, which means that they could drill with ease. It also means that his previous concerns that led him to choose to use primitive tools for digging were useless. That night, they drilled half of the wall of the safe and agreed to finish the drilling on the day they would carry out the robbery, which Albert had determined to be Saturday, July 19th. He chose Saturday because it was a weekend. The agreed upon day came, and that night they gathered in the tunnel they had dug. Then they completed the drilling of the wall of the safe and at 4 a.m. they had managed to enter the safe. When they entered, they welded the door of the safe so that no one could enter. Then they began to break open the safety deposit boxes and steal their contents, which were money, gold, and treasures. At that time, a money transport truck arrived and threw a bag full of money into the safe through an opening on the outside. When the thieves saw that bag, they were very happy. They also found gold utensils. In their great joy at the loot they had gathered, they ate food they had brought with them on those gold utensils. After 27 hours in the safe, they had managed to open 400 safety deposit boxes out of 4,000 boxes. At 5 a.m. on Sunday morning, Albert decided that they had to leave. Before leaving, he took a spray can and wrote on the wall the phrase, without weapons, without violence, without hatred. And so, the robbery was carried out. After 
after the investigators heard Albert's story. They detained him until a verdict was issued against him. During the detention period, Albert and his lawyer met with the judge every Thursday in his office because the judge wanted to evaluate Albert's cooperation in the case. Everyone was expecting that he would get a reduced sentence because the robbery was carried out without weapons and because of his cooperation. However, one day, something unexpected happened. While Albert and the lawyer were with the judge, Albert presented the judge with papers with sewer plans. Then he began to explain to him how they carried out the robbery. As he was explaining, it began to appear to the judge that he was not understanding what he was saying. Albert got up from his seat and stood behind the judge and began to explain to him on the map how they carried out the operation. While the judge was focused on the explanation, Albert ran to the window, jumped out, landed on the roof of a car, then got on a motorcycle with someone who was waiting for him and escaped. The police were notified and began to search for him everywhere, but to no avail. No one saw Albert Spagiri again after that day. Now, this is the end of the story. We hope you enjoyed your time with us. Write for us your opinions in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it with your friends.